Greetings, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom which has been prepared for you since the creation of the world. These are the words Jesus Christ told his disciples. But what did he mean by that? What is the kingdom of God? How was it prepared for them, for you and for me, since the creation of the world? Well, we need to go back to the records about when the world was created. And you read that in the book of Genesis, in the first chapter, beginning in verse 1, where you read in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But then we read that the earth became void and empty, and the surface of the earth had to be renewed. And then later on in the same chapter, you read that God said, Let us make man in our image, in accordance with our likeness. Now, notice carefully what God said. He didn't say, Let me make man in my image, in accordance with my likeness. He talked about himself in a plural form. And the reason is that God consists of more than just one person. What actually happened here is that God the Father spoke to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, saying, let us make man in our image, in accordance with our likeness. And the New Testament reconfirms the fact that God the Father created everything through Jesus Christ. It was actually Christ who did the creating following the instructions of his Father. In the book of John, the Apostle John talks about this in John 1.1, 1, 1, where he says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Greek for Word is logos, which means speaker or spokesman. And he identifies the Word as Jesus Christ, because in verse 14 he says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And later on, Jesus Christ is referred to as the Word of God. And so in the beginning was the Word. Now that doesn't mean that the Word was created, that the Word had a beginning. Whatever quote-unquote beginning you want to look at, the Word, the Logos, Jesus Christ, was already there. And it goes on to say, and the Word was with God. Now here we are talking about a separate, different, additional being. And that is God the Father. So the Word, Christ, was with God the Father. And then it goes on to say, and the Word was God. So they both, the Father and the Son, were God beings. And that tells you something, my friends. And that is that God is a family, consisting of God, the Father, and Jesus Christ, the Son. But it's not a closed family, because other members are to be added to it. And we read that everything was made through the Word. You read that in John 1 and verse 3. And again, it points out that it was Jesus Christ who did actually the creation, including the creation of man. And also in the book of Colossians, you read that God the Father created everything through Jesus Christ. So here you have it. God is a family. God is a ruling family. You might say God is a ruling kingdom. And the kingdom of God, my friends, describes God the Father and Jesus Christ ruling in that kingdom. They are the kingdom. And when we read that the kingdom has been prepared for us since the beginning of creation, the beginning of the world, then this has tremendous meaning for you and for me. Because man was created in the image and the likeness of God. Now, first of all, on a physical level. He was not created a spirit being. He was created a physical being with the potential, though, to become a spirit being, with the potential, though, to enter the kingdom of God, the family of God, as a glorified God being. And so you read in the first letter to the Corinthians that Paul says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But this flesh has to put on immortality. It has to become glorified. And so you read in the New Testament that the glory of Christ shall be revealed in us and that we will have the fullness of God. When you have received God's Holy Spirit, it is a down payment for your salvation. It is a down payment or a guarantee for eternal life. But with the seed of God's Holy Spirit, you have already become a partaker of the divine nature of God, as Peter tells us. And Christ says that you shall become perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. But not only that. 
He also reads that Paul says that as we have been bearing the likeness of the earthly man, Adam, so we shall bear the likeness, note this word, of the heavenly man, Jesus Christ. That is why you and I were created to become like Jesus Christ, to bear his likeness. And of course, Christ is in the likeness of God the Father. In the first letter in the book of John, you read that John says that if we have received God's Holy Spirit, we are already the children of God. But he goes on to say, but it hasn't been revealed yet as what we shall be. But when he, Christ, is revealed, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. As a physic, physical human being, you cannot see a spirit being as he is unless he reveals himself in a vision, manifests himself in that way. But when we are spirit beings, we shall be like Jesus Christ. And then we can, of course, see him as he is. And in the book of Revelation, you find that Jesus Christ is described as a glorified or powerful being. And we shall be like him. The Bible makes it very clear that we are created, that human beings are created with the potential to enter the kingdom of God, the family of God, as children. Right now we are begotten children through the Holy Spirit. When the transformation comes, we shall be born again children, born into the family of God, the kingdom of God. That is why it has been prepared for us. In order to be in the kingdom of God, you must be God. And the Bible makes this very clear, that it is your potential to become a God being. At one time, the Jews accused Christ of blasphemy, because he called God his Father. And he also said that he was the Son of God. Now Christ is the firstborn among many brethren. You also read in the book of Romans that Paul says that God's Holy Spirit, if it dwells in us, testifies together with our spirit, our human mind, that we are the children of God. And that is why we can call God our dear Father. Now back to the controversy he had with the Jews. Jesus said that, why do you call me and accuse me of blasphemy? Doesn't your law, and he quotes the Psalms, say that you are God's? And he goes on to say, and the scripture cannot be broken. In other words, whatever is written there has to be fulfilled. And then he goes on to say, but why do you accuse me of blasphemy when I say that I am the son of God? Again, confirming the fact that it is the potential of man to become God. David knew this. He said, when I awake, I will be happy that I awake in your likeness. Talking about the resurrection from the dead to eternal life. My friends, there is so much more I would like to talk about insofar as your entrance into the kingdom of God, the family of God is concerned, but I'm running out of time and I will talk about it in the next program. In the meantime, I'd like to ask you to request this free booklet. It is about Jesus Christ, a great mystery. If Jesus Christ is the firstborn among many brethren, and if you are part of that category of brethren, you had better know who Jesus Christ was and who he is today. He is not a helpless little child in a manga. He is not a dead savior on the cross. He is the all-powerful King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is our high priest intervening on our behalf. And you must know what he is doing today and how it relates to your entrance into the kingdom of God. My friends, this book is absolutely free of charge. There is no request for money, no request for follow-ups. Please do yourself a favor. We are going to even pay the postage for you. Please request this booklet, Jesus Christ, A Great Mystery. You can also go to our website and read it online or download it from there. But better yet, ask for a free copy of this free and astonishing booklet. It will open your eyes. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.